الحمد لله الذي يمد الافلاك والارضين والصلاه والسلام على من كان نبيا وادم بين الماء والطين وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين فاوز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد من الله على المؤمنين اذ بعث فيهم رسولا من انفسهم صدق الله العظيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافيه الابدان وشفائها ونور الابصار وضيائها وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين ريسبكتد سكولرز علامه امام خالد علامه امام عادل شهزاد ريسبكتد نات خان My brothers, listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I'm just going to be quite short because the time does not permit us to give a lengthy lecture. Imam Khalid has mentioned already about the beauty of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And Ghaliban Imam Hafiz Sharif mentioned about the akhlaq and the adab and the character of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after their lecture I don't think I need to speak anymore in ashar ke saath ki jamal-e mushaf-e quran ko roo ba roo rakho jamal-e mushaf-e قرآن کو رو برو رکھو حدیث آیت رحمت کو ہو بہو رکھو حدیث آئے رحمت کو ہو بہو رکھو بیان مدح رسول انام سے پہلے بیان مدح رسول انام سے پہلے تم اپنے سارے خیالوں کو باوضو رکھو تم اپنے سارے خیالوں کو باوضو رکھو My respected youngsters, we live in the 21st century. <coughs> and what is our aim and objective? Success. I want success. A doctor, success. A teacher, success. Imam of the masjid, success. An orator, success. Mechanic, success. But according to the Sufia, the Sufis, they say before you attain success, ask, what is success? I was in Leicester and we got a phone call <coughs> Husseini Mia I said Ji Dua kariye Mane ka kisli Pakistan is playing <laughs> Achcha Against West Indies Achcha And Dua for what? So Pakistan wins the match Winning the match is success. Winning a match is success. Ask Sayyidina Junaid Baghdadi. He will say losing a match is success. For he lost against a descendant of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Success. What is success? A brother might stand up. Mastercard, Visa card, wealth in the bank, comfort of this world, having children, having authority and leadership. This is success. Wealth and children is success 
the land of karbala will tell you sacrificing your wealth and children is success what is success as soon as you said that the muazzin said hayya ala salah hayya ala salah hayya ala falah hayya ala falah hurry towards salah come towards salah hurry towards success yes reading salah reading namaz is success but maula ali will tell you sometime postponing salat is successful what is success we will ask sayyidna junaid baghdadi what is success we will ask imam hussein what is success we will ask maula ali they will say imam hazrat junaid baghdadi will say i lost that much for who for muhammad aur rasulullah sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam imam hussein will say i sacrifice my family my children my wealth and health for muhammad aur rasulullah sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam maula ali would say i sacrificed my asr for the love of muhammad aur rasulullah sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam success is not in wealth success is not in authority success is not in wealth and comfort success is at the feet of muhammad aur rasulullah sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam this is success you want success the sufi say beautiful thing you want success going to the moon is not success kissing the feet of he who split the moon into two is success come towards rasulullah sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam in his remembrance is your success in his company is your success in his adherence is your success in his adab and in his love is your success do you want to gain success we talked about the asr of maula ali a beautiful topic we can talk about days and nights and this is the favorite topic of the sufis they say hazrat maula ali had two options the prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam was resting hazrat maula ali could have told ya rasulullah please get up i need to pray asr he had two options asr is an act of worship but the adab of rasul is also an act of worship loving the prophet is also ibadat asr is also ibadat loving the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also an act of worship is there any scholar here present superior in knowledge than maula ali any mufti any muhaddis any faqi any mutakallim any mujtahid in the uk anyone in saudi arabia anyone what was the decision of maula ali subhanallah what was the faisla hazrat maula ali ka faisla kya tha ek taraf asr ek taraf mohabbat e rasul ek rasta asr ka hai ek rasta mohabbat e rasul ek rasta asr khuda ki ibadat dusra mohabbat e rasul ab मौला अली तो बाबुल इल्म है मौला अली वो हैं कि जिनके पास हजूर सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम से जिनके पास इल्म हासिल हुआ तो मौला अली से बड़ा कोई मुफ्ती है मौला अली से बड़ा आलिम कोई है मौला अली करते क्या हैं मौला अली करते क्या हैं मौला अली ने ये देखा यू नो दूफी से मौला अली ही लुकड एन एक्ट ऑफ वर्शिप दिस इज ऑल्सो एन एक्ट ऑफ वर्शिप loving the prophet is also an act of worship when two acts of worship came together at one time he performed that which was most superior he performed that why because through the love of muhammad rasulullah will ever be my salah accepted in the courtyard of allah subhanahu wa taala maula ali ne kya dekha ye dalil hai he is the evidence of the existence of allah he is the evidence he is burhan He is Burhan e Azim, the greatest evidence of the existence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Ha, Sufiya farmate hain fard tha. Agar Maula Ali asr ki namaz ke liye khade hote, to chehra Kabe ki taraf hota. Lekin jab chehra Mustafa ki taraf tha, to ye Kabe ke qibla ki taraf tha. ये काबे के किबले की तरफ था माय रिस्पेक्टेड फ्रेंड्स सक्सेस यू वांट सक्सेस गो टू मदीनतुल मुनवरा 
لقد من اللہ المؤمنین اس بعض صفیم رسول بن الفسیم انڈی اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ has favor upon the believers what is the favor by sending a prophet a great عظیم prophet amongst them a rasool why why is he a favor have you ever realized that why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam as his greatest favor why what was the purpose of your creation and my creation why were we created to to وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِعْبُدُونَ The purpose of our creation is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must believe in Him. To believe in Him, we must know Him. Yes. The purpose of our creation is to worship Allah. To worship Allah, you must believe in Him. To believe in Him, you must know him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you five sources of knowledge he gave you eyesight so you can see and gain knowledge he gave you tongue the power of taste the power of hearing the power of seeing the power of smelling the power of your brain but the point is can you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can you feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can you hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can you imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if you don't know Him, you will not be able to believe in Him. And if you do not believe in Him, you will not be able to worship Him. And if you don't worship Him, your destination is hellfire. And your five sources of knowledge, Allah is beyond that. Your brain cannot imagine Him. Your eyes cannot see him. One beam was required. One link was required. One link was required. Who was Bashar and Nur? Who was Bashar and Nur? Who was the greatest evidence of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? One personality was required. Wallahi lazim. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the greatest favor upon the believers is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Through him, you recognize me. Through him, you recognize me. Through him, you believed in him. And following him, you know the acts of worship. Greatest favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why my friends, we were talking and he mentioned about the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Imam Khalid mentioned about that he's present. He's with us. He's with us. Why? Because the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you do a favor upon someone, I gave you a gift, I did a favor upon you. You gave me uh, iPad 5 or 4, whatever it is, you did a favor upon me. Right? You gave me some money, you did a favor upon me. I gave you some money, I did a favor upon you. But if I take that money away, what will you say? Hussein Imiya did a favor upon me. Does the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala apply till now? And until the day of judgment? Yes. Allah did favor upon every believer until the day of judgment. If the favor applies until the day of judgment, the ni'mat must also exist. The ni'mat must also exist. This is why if you read Kitab al-Shifa and Shara of Kitab al-Shifa, it's mentioned when you go into an empty house, say, and there's no one to say salam, say, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Why? Read Shara of Shifa. Scholars write, why? Because the soul of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is present in the houses of every Muslim. He's present. The Prophet ﷺ is present. My respected friends, you want success? 
come at the feet of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. We talked about the shama'il, the beauty, the perfection of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. How perfect he was, how beautiful he was. A unique, a perfect personality. Whether it's his character, whether it is, it is his physicality, his beauty, his manifestation. In every angle he was a perfect human being. He was a perfect personality. And we read from the uh, lie, uh, from the life of the Sahaba and from the narration of Umm Ma'bad. When Rasulullah wasallam was traveling with his companions, he went uh, at a place because they were hungry, they were thirsty. And Umm Ma'bad was there. Uh, I'm not going to describe this incident. It's a very, very uh, famous qissa uh, story. Uh, and, and so she, she had a goat. The Prophet asked for milk. There was no milk. She said the, the goat is weak. She cannot give milk. The Prophet placed his blessed hands upon the goat. And not containers upon containers upon containers were filled. These were not ordinary hands. These were not ordinary hands. When these hands throw, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Vama ramaita, is ramaita, walakin Allah harama. These are not normal and ordinary hands. When he throws, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He does not throw, I throw. I throw. These are not ordinary hands. Inna ladina yubayunaka, inna ma yubayuna laha, yadullahi fauqa idihim. When, Ya Rasulullah, you do bait, you take bait of these believers, you're not taking bait, I am taking bait. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am taking bait, yadullahi, it's the hand of Allah upon their hands. These are not ordinary hands. These are not ordinary hands. This is why we say the hands of our mashayikh are not ordinary hands. Why? Because they hold the hands of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why the hands of Data Ganjbaksh Ali Hajweri and Khwaja Mahinuddin Chishti and Ghosay Azam Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani are not the hands of ordinary individuals. They have, they hold the hands of Maul Ali and Maul Ali holds the hands of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These hands and when these blessed hands were placed Upon the goat, milk upon milk. And then when, the, when they left, Umm Ma'bad, she was amazed at this beauty of Muhammad Rasulullah. Her husband came and she described the beauty. Raitu Rajulan. Zahir al Wada. Ablaj al Waj. Hassan al Khalq. I saw a man extremely beautiful. Light, as if light and brightness was manifesting, manifesting from his body. How beautiful he was. Extremely handsome. Beautiful face. As they say, Nurani Chehra Jise Kehte hain. Nurani Chehra. My respected friends. His face, you know, people say, people say, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a man by his, his apparent nature and his fitra. Don't judge a man. But Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, this rule finishes where he starts. Aywa. This rule, this is why Abdullah ibn Salam, when he saw the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, for the first time he was not a Muslim. He saw the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he saw his face, he looked at his face, he saw the beauty of the face of Muhammad Rasulullah. He asked him no question, no arguments, no cross-examination. He saw his face and he says, Araftu anna wajahu laysa bi wajhi kazab. When I saw the face, the beautiful face of Muhammad Rasulullah, I knew that this face cannot be a face of a liar. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. So I accept Islam and I accept the, you as the messenger of Allah. The beautiful face of Muhammad. You know this hadith, uh, this description of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a very long description. My final point. She said a beautiful thing. She said, Ajmalun nas abhahum min ba'id wa ahlahu wa ahsanuhu min qareeb and he was the most beautiful person from far. You know, when you look at someone from far, you think, mashallah, nice person. When he comes near you, you think, hey, who's this Jack the lad? <laughs> but she said a beautiful thing. She said, he was so beautiful from Ba'id, the best of people from Ba'id. But when he came near, he was even more beautiful. He was even more beautiful whether you see him from near whether you see him from Ba'id 
He was beautiful and not just it does not apply by distance but if you understand this statement by not just distance but by time Allah. by time those who saw him those who saw him they described his beauty Hassan bin Ibn Sabit I do not, I cannot praise the Prophet sallam, with my naat. My naat, my poetry becomes praiseworthy because of the name of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that because he was close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thousand years after, Peer Meher Ali Shah said, Kithe Meher Ali, Kithe Teri Sana, Ghustakh Kiyan, Kithe Jalariya. Remember, those who saw him from near, from closeness, they saw the beauty of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Hazrat Abu Ayyub al-Ansari was sitting at the grave of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Marwan said, hey, what are you doing? What are you sitting next to a, a, a stone? He says, I'm not sitting next to a stone. I'm sitting next to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the statement of he who was close, who was qareeb with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine and observe this statement of he who came thousand years later but saw the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Tu zinda hai wallah, tu zinda hai wallah, meri chashme alam se chup jane wale. This is the beauty of Ma. Even if you see him from far, 1400 years before, they described his beauty. 1400 years after, we are still describing his beauty. From far, he was beautiful. From near, he's beautiful. 1400 years before, Khalid bin Walid and his companions and his followers would say in battle, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah. 1400 years after, in this masjid in London, you all are saying, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah. From far he was beautiful, from near he was beautiful. This is the maqam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Summarizing this entire event, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to follow Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to love him, to follow him, and to follow his sahaba and his family.